everyone and welcome to episode 65 of United City Randomizer and this is the sort of introduction to season 7 so we're going to be doing lots of stuff today we're going to be looking at the uh, the way that we've started in pre-season and early part of the season we're going to be talking about our transfer uh, incomings and outgoings we'll be talking about the season expectations etc so yeah let's um, get into this episode and, and look around the club a little bit and see where we're at so this is what happened in pre-season you can see that we played a number of friendlies against some good opposition uh, Copenhagen Sh uh, Shakhtar Zenit Monaco, Fenerbahce, all decent sides and we did very well. We didn't lose any of them. We got a couple of draws in there but overall while we were trying to still build up a side and a squad for the coming season we, we competed very well against them. Unfortunately the first opportunity to play a competitive game um, we uh, played against Bayern Munich in the Super Cup having won the cup against them, the cup final in the last episode we um qualified for the Super Cup for this season to play Bayern who won the league obviously um, and we drew two all and then we lost on penalties and, and the thing that I would say about that more than anything is that I really genuinely feel that we're now beginning to be able to compete with Bayern Munich on a one-to-one -one basis in our games that we play against them which is a real step forward from where we used to be when we were losing quite heavily at times so that's the encouragement of obviously the disappointment is that Unfortunately, we lost on penalties, but you know we will live to fight another day and come up against them in the league later on and see whether we can take some points off them this season. But it was an okay performance, um, just a, a slightly unfortunate result. We then played the first round in the German Cup, which of course, as I say, we won last season, so we're defending that particular title. And it was an easy first round win, 6-0, perfectly great. Um, and you can see further down here, we've been drawn against Darms, uh, Darmstadt in the second round of the cup in late October. And Darmstadt are a, a Bundesliga 2 side, so a good opportunity for us to get another win and, and continue to progress there. We'll come to that later on in the season. So that's all started well. And then we've played two games in the Bundesliga against Schalke and Bochum. And yeah, really, really good start. Really happy with it. We um, won against Schalke quite comfortably um, and played well, which is really good at our home game. And again, followed that up with a nice 2-0 win against uh, probably one of the lesser lights in the division, let's face it. But it was good. We, we played well. We're looking solid. We're getting goals. And so far... It's been a really, really good um, introduction to the Season 7 um, and I'm really happy with where we're at. So in, in terms of our season expectations, if we come into this page here, you'll see the, the competitions that we're involved in. Obviously, the Super Cup is now done. Unfortunately, we uh, got beat, as I say, in that. Um, the expectation from the board in the German Cup is for us to reach the quarterfinal. I mean, I'd quite like to defend our title and win it again. Whether that's possible or not, we'll have to see. But um, I think we can probably achieve that. I think, you know, we, we've got a squad that's in decent nick. And I hope that, you know, we'll continue to progress in, in that particular competition. In terms of the Euro Cup or the Europa League, uh, whatever you want to call it, uh, I think this is a... Per um, a very good group for us, a potential uh, easy route out of the group, I think. None of those sides scare me. I mean, they'll all provide tough, tough opposition, I'm sure. But I really think we can get out of this group and continue to progress in the competition. The board, again, wants us to reach the semi-final in this. And, you know, I think that's a, a decent shout. Whether we can go further than that, we'll have to see. But... There is nothing in this group that worries me, particularly until we get going and we find out differently, obviously. But so I see I see us doing quite well in the Euro Cup this season. Let's hope that that turns out to be the case. In terms of the Bundesliga, you can see that um, the board have set fairly low expectation, really, to just qualify for the Euro Cup, the Europa League again. Uh, which means a finish of like fifth or sixth. In terms of the pre-season preview of the um, odds for the Bundesliga, we were predicted to finish fourth, which again, you know, that's fine. Anywhere in the top four, you have to be happy with at this point just because that gets us Champions League football again, which is what I'd really like to have for next season. Um, but in truth, I think we've got a decent squad in a decent position to be able to potentially push for a title challenge not saying win it obviously the likes of Bayern Munich wherever they currently are they're sitting down in 15th after two games having not started very well but they're, they're going to be up there again and the likes of uh, by Leverkusen 
and Leipzig and the like will all be up there I'm sure so I'd like to be in the conversation at least for challenging for the title if we can do that I think we'll have had a very good season if we could win it it would be an extraordinary season wouldn't it so yeah those are the the board expectations and some of my expectations for what we're going to be hoping to achieve this season and to achieve that we had a fairly busy summer in the end uh, a couple of things here one is a, a new member of staff that i'm trying to get in in terms of the sports scientist so he hopefully will come in let's go and have a check in on him you can see he's got a decent rating on fitness his sports science is at 20 so he's good so hopefully he'll come in and just add some quality to that particular section of our coaching staff um, Herons Berger is a youngster that's coming in next summer on the 22nd of the 7th 2025 which is next year um, and so he's coming in uh, as a youngster into our under 19s I think there's some um, you know decent stats here probably decent attributes should I say probably not as many as you like but I'm hoping that he'll improve as he plays a bit of games this season for his current club but he's coming in next season and you know for a couple of million it's worth a punt I've done that a, a, a bit this summer you can see that we've spent quite a bit of money for us finally um, compared to, and bought a, a bit in you know not too bad compared to what we've had before um, so what we're going to do is I'm going to show you a couple of youngsters in this in incoming list that aren't going to feature this season just to see what you uh, we've got in the backup area. I'm going to then talk about our striking option, which is the main bit of business that I wanted to do um, uh, because we needed to replace a couple of loan strikers. We've been loaning strikers for several seasons now and I just got the uh, to the point where I need a striker that's going to come in not necessarily be the most amazing thing in the world in season one but remain here and get used to the club and used to the players so next season even if he hasn't had the best first season he can build on um, knowing the club and knowing the players and the style of play and continue to improve the problem with bringing loan strikers in all the time is that they then have to get used to the system and the team around them etc and it just takes a while to settle and then they're gone again and you can't continue to build with them so if you remember let's go back a, a season in terms of transfers in January we bought uh, this guy in Petrella and he will now play as one of our striking options it was good we bought him in we sent one of our youngsters in the current in the squad at that point out on loan for half a season he's come back into the squad as well because we've got rid of our two loan strikers so it left a third striking position that i needed to find that's i play one up front so i need three decent strikers uh, Vitava is the one that went out on loan and is now back in the club as well so you can see with Vitava and Petrella they're both decent strikers with some good attributes and worth having in our squad but I still thought we could potentially find better to replace the likes of Jovic and who was the other one the other one was Rollheiser wasn't it who's not on that list those were the two uh, loaned in strikers and they've now gone back to their clubs so the one that we eventually found was this guy, Maximilian Shad. And I'm really happy that he's in the in the club. He cost me a lot of money for us in that sense. 35 million we spent on him. I think there was some um, additional payments. It wasn't just 35 up front. There were some other bits in the deal. But look at, you know, de really decent physical attributes. Some good mental attributes in terms of composure and decisions and off the ball. And his work rate's high, which is really encouraging. And some very good technical attributes in terms of what we need him to have. Finishing and first touch. His passing's decent, so he'll be able to contribute to the play. And technique is good as well. So there is a really good striker in here. And just to give you a flavour of that, he went with Austria his country to the European Championships over the summer and Austria won the championships and he top scored scoring I think it was eight goals in seven games in the competition so he's a striker on form only come in and played a couple of games for us so far but already got a goal and I've got really high hopes for this guy moving forward whether he lights up the league this season or not he's certainly one that we can build with and he's only 23 years old so those three strikers Shad and Petrella 
and Vatava, I think we've got some firepower there that we can work with moving forward. So that's the first bit of business that we did. And it was the most important and the one thing that I desperately wanted to figure out before we did anything else, because I wanted to put as much of my um, transfer budget into the best striker I could find. And that's what we did. So before we get to um, some of the outs and some of the replacements for those outs, here are, there are three players in this list here that are all youngsters that won't feature this season but are going to be really good in the future. And I spent 11 million in total on these three players just because I thought they've got something about them. So Stefan Freudberg, Freudberger. <laughs> It's probably Friedberger, but we, we might call him Friedberger, I don't know. Anyway, great name, but he's a youngster at 18. He'll have one season in the under-19s, and then we'll check on his progress, because I think there's some good attributes in here. It might not be the best, there might be some gaps, but it was worth having a look at him, I think, and bringing him in for a season in the under-19s, just to see whether we can develop him. And he's got a four-star potential, which is encouraging. And I think there's a player in there, so we'll keep an eye on him as he goes. The next is this guy here, Enrico Brancadori. And he's again another central defender. We lacked central defenders in our under-19, so I bought in a couple just to um, boost the numbers there. But he's only 16 and he's already got some really good attributes for the position that he plays. So I'm really encouraged by him. I, I want him to improve, obviously, in the next couple of years in the under-19s, but there's no reason why he can't. And I think there's a really good player in here if we can develop him well. So it's another one to keep an eye on as we move forward, but won't feature for the next couple of seasons. And the other one that I'm really excited about uh, in the sort of medium to long term is this guy, Jean-Baptiste Galtier. Uh, French 17 year old youngster but look at his attributes already for 17 they're pretty decent and he's already increasing them as he's come into the club as well through our training and I think given a, again given a season in the under 19s we'll check on his progress and see where he's at but there is no reason why this guy can't break into our first team squad at some point in a not too distant future now it cost me six million to bring him in I know that was a lot of money for a youngster but He's got five-star potential and he's already showing that he can improve. And I'm quite excited about what he might bring for us in the future. So, of course, that's for another season, not this one. But it's worth keeping an eye on these youngsters. And there'll be another youngster that I want to show you that's already in our under-19s in a second as we go through this list of um, outs and who we've replaced them with into our first team squad. So... Uh, the, the one youngster here that you won't know anything about is this guy and he just wasn't good enough. Got to the point where his contract was up and I thought, why would I want to continue with him? He's just not improving. So we let him move on and that's fine. He's now moved on. So let's go down this list and match them up to who's replaced them in our squad. The first one on the list is Kempf and the simple reason for letting him go was you can see here that his um, attributes and his uh, star ratings etc were fairly low in compared to most of our squad uh, and he's now 29 years old and I just felt it was the right time with a contract coming up soon to move him on so we don't have to figure out what to do with him when his contract runs down and, and lose him for for nothing so in the end we got five and a half million for him he's gone to Colm which is great for him and I'm more than happy with that and the player that we replaced him with was the youngster that I said uh, from our under-19s. And he's come into the first team squad. He's not a complete player yet. Tobias Adelworth. Adelworth. Um, and as I say, he's not the complete player. I'd like a bit more heading. I'm trying to get him to work on some stuff to improve. Um, but there's some good attributes in here. His decisions and his determination and his uh, tackling and you know all that kind of stuff is good attributes and he's 19 and he's homegrown player now because he's been in our uh, under 20 uh, under 19s for a little while I think let's come out and check that where is he he's here yes he's a, a, a homegrown for the club so he's been in the club for a few years developing his game he's got a four-star potential and I thought it was worth promoting him and not having to spend money on a Kempf replacement just at this point and again, that's why also we've brought in a couple of young central defenders that we've already seen for future seasons, because I think there's some space for improvements in that particular area of our team moving forward. 
Um, so yes, that's the first one. Kempf was replaced by Adelwolf. Um, and then we get to Burnich, who's left the club having been on loan with us for many years and then we bought him. And to be honest, he was just a, a player that I didn't want to lose because he'd been with us for so long but doesn't have the quality anymore to really compete with our uh, current set of players. So we moved him on and um, he, he's happy with that and I'm happy with that. We didn't get much money for him but that's okay. I wasn't expecting much and I'm I'm more than happy that he's served his time at the club and has now decided to move on. Now let me tell you about the saga of his replacement Antonelli and Antonello Durante. Boy this player was a problem. So we bought him in for 10 million pounds. Uh, he's, he looked half decent 20 years old I thought I could improve him he's got de really good determination so I thought there's a learner in here that will want to improve and we can stick him behind the likes of Saiki and he can improve a little bit under us and we'll have a player in there eventually some good attributes already um, and I thought yeah decent deal so we bought him in for 10 million um, he settled down for a little while but a little while afterwards Claudio Gomez came on the market. Now, I tried to re-loan him. We had him on loan last season. I tried again, but Man City weren't having it. But then they transfer listed him at 1.9 million. And I thought, well, that's a bargain. And I know that he works in our system and I know he works in our club because we've already had him in our club. So why wouldn't I have a go for him? And a couple of other teams went in for him. I was no, not guaranteed that he would come to us at all. But in the end, we worked on a deal enough that... He did. He chose us. And so he came into the club and we only spent we only spent one point nine million on him, as I say, and he's now worth seven. So you can see that we got a bargain here. Um as I say, we know that he works in our system. So he came back in the club, which is really encouraging. And of course, immediately Durante threw his toys out the pram completely. I've never seen somebody lose their head so quickly in a football manager game before. Within the space of days, he was so cross and so angry and so throwing such a hissy fit all over the place. And I tried to suggest to him that I'm happy with the balance of the squad, that everybody would get their chance, that I was happy that um, he, you know he would play some games. But he just wasn't having it and, f and threw such a hissy fit. And in the end, he demanded that I let him go on a transfer. So it wasn't worth keeping. I wasn't bothered by his attitude it, um, and he wasn't a good enough player for me to really fight for. And so I decided that the best thing to do was to let him go. And who comes in for him? Well, I bought Gomez from Man City and they were obviously looking for a replacement. A replacement and so they bought him off me. Now, I lost money on him. I spent 10, and in the end, we got a, an upfront of 6.25, uh, potentially leading to 7.75, depending on how well he does. But to be honest, I just wanted rid of him at that point because he was such a problem. Um, and as I say, I've never quite seen it as bad as that. Obviously, I've seen players throw hissy fits before, but this was terrible. And so he then left the club and hasn't played for us, and that's fine. Good riddance to him because we've got a better player who knows our club and knows the players in Claudio Gomez. So welcome to Claudio again. It's good to have him permanently. So the next one down the list is uh, of our outs was Jay De Silva. Decent player, decent, you know, left back, did okay for us. Didn't light the place up and has got one or two gaps in his attributes. And I just thought I want to freshen it up a little bit. So I had a look around as to who was out there. Um, again, once we'd done our striker business, I was free to have a look and see what else we could improve. And I found an improvement on, on Jay De Silva. And again, we paid some decent money for this guy, 23.5 million. But we bought Lenhoff. And he's a German youngster at 20, which is, you know, helpful. But I think there's a really good left back in here. Again, we could improve him, I hope. And he'll um, improve on things like his crossing, maybe. But I think his attributes are decent. I mean, his mentals are okay. His physicals are very good. And he's got most of the attributes you need to play the role as the left back. So I'm, I'm hopeful that we've got a decent enough player in here. Good stamina, good work rate to get up and down the left-hand side. Teamwork isn't great, is it? But I think there's a decent enough player in here. And he'll battle with uh, DeMarco for the uh, first-choice left-back role. Um, but I think it's, it's a good purchase. A lot of money, 
but he's only 20 and he's got a lot of potential ability so we'll see whether we can develop him so that's the new left back and he'll start as first choice because of how much we paid and because I think there's a decent player in there and we'll just see how he gets on next one down on the list was our youngster that we've already looked at then there's Durante who we've talked about in length at the fact that he um, left the club having come in and then Luca Unbehaun the reserve goalkeeper uh, we we had a, a decent offer from Bayer Leverkusen for him of uh, 10.5 million if things go well for him and it just wasn't he was fine it was a good good reserve goalkeeper but he wasn't someone I was overly bothered about keeping and when we got a decent offer for him I thought well why not I'm sure we can find something that's equal to that. So we potentially made 10.5 million on him and we've also spent 10.5 million on a replacement for him. Not the finished article yet, but Ganso, 18-year-old Brazilian and that's why we went for this guy when we were looking around. 18. He's got some gaps in his attributes, absolutely he has. But he's also got some very good goalkeeping attributes already and he's only 18 years old and I think we could really develop him. Um, his concentration levels are good his anticipation is good his positioning's okay his agility's great he's got some very good goalkeeping stats here and there so I think there's a really decent goalkeeper in here and as I say at 18 years old I think it was worth uh, taking a punt on him and seeing if we can develop him into something as the seasons go on so yeah that came about not because I was looking to replace Unbehound but when a decent offer came in I thought why not let's have a look around that's who I found and I'm more than happy with that so that's the list of um, what we've done in terms of the outgoings and the incomings for this particular season but there is one other player that I want to tell you something about and he sits in our under 19s but you can see we've got a lot of potential now I've worked really hard of bringing some decent sort of 16 15 year olds into this um, squad to see if we can improve some of them and get them out we've talked about the likes of Galtier who I'm very excited about the one player in here that I might have I've had in uh, for the se for last season he's been in our under 90s I might have wanted to actually move him up even at this point this season but we can't because he's only 16 and, and he's not old enough to play in the Bundesliga yet is Sergei Samolev, Samolov uh, yeah Samoylov we'll figure that one out as we go um, now, this guy really is exciting, I think. At the age of 16, I think he's got some really great attributes, known more so than his amazing determination and flair and his teamwork ethic. His first touch is great. I think there's a really, really decent player in here. Still too young to play for us just at the moment in the Bundesliga, as I say. But I was, I would have been tempted to bring him up and just give him some uh, matches here and there had he not been. So again, for next season, the reason I'm mentioning it is watch out for this guy next season because the only lone player that we now have in our squad is this guy, uh, Oliver Batista Meyer, and he's on loan from Bayern Munich uh, till the end of this season. And so I don't think we'll be bringing him back again because I think we'll bring up the youngster instead to replace him and see if we can develop one of our own. Now, this guy's got some very good attributes and he's a decent player. I'm very happy to have him and we'll see what happens with him. But I think we'll bring up the youngster to replace him when this guy goes back to Bayern because it will be difficult for us to get him out of Bayern, I think. Anyway, that's for another day. But that's why I wanted to show you the youngster in, in the under-19s because I think there's a route for him into our first-team squad. And, yeah... That's kind of what we've done over the summer. As I say, the, the only thing that I desperately wanted to do was sort out my striking options, which I felt I did quite early on. And that enabled me to go and have a look around the place for some other potential improvements. Um, and I think I've done that. And I'm really happy with the squad. You can see that we've still got a couple of weak links here and there. I would have liked to have found a better right back potentially, but that'll have to do for January or next summer. That'll be one of the things that we look at for them and a couple of others as well but on the whole I'm really happy with our squad and it's being demonstrated by the fact that we've started the season very well and we sit top of the Bundesliga as we speak which what more can you ask for in the early part of the season and we've still got you know almost 30 million in the balance we're still way under our wage budget which is really encouraging um, so I've, I would suggest that we're in a very good position and I'm really hopeful that that can be demonstrated in terms of our performances this season moving forward whilst we try and attack 
a couple of different competitions and try and do as well as we can on them. So, yeah, that's about as much as I want to tell you, really. That's covered uh, where, where our pre-season was, all of our decent start and, you know, our friendlies and into the Bundesliga, the unfortunate Super Cup, unfortunately, uh, the, the loss there. But, you know, that's one of those things. We've talked about our season expectations by going into this particular page and looking through all the cup competitions and the, the different league um, games that we've got uh, coming up, etc. So, and we've talked about all of our different uh, incomings and outgoings in terms of our transfer dealings which I think I'm really happy with we spent a bit of money absolutely we did we bought a bit in but you know it was there and the club finances are in a decent position so I'm, I'm more than happy with what we did so all in all that leads us into a, a particularly really exciting campaign that I'm really hopeful that we can achieve some big targets obviously you know who knows with that that can change very easily but You've got to be optimistic at this point, and I think we've got a decent squad. So in terms of what we're going to be doing over the next couple of episodes, if we move through a little bit, the next episode we'll come back and we'll play the uh, Bayer Leverkusen game, and then we'll come back the following episode and play our Dynamo Kiev uh, Euro uh, Europa League Cup game, just because uh, it's worth you know, having a look at some of our opposition there then we'll probably come back and play the cup game after that and then we'll go and play Bayern in the league after that in terms of episodes so there's the next few episodes sorted out and by the time that we get past Bayern we'll we'll know how well we've been doing and, and where we sit in some of these competitions which will be really encouraging so I hope you'll join me for the journey of, of season seven it's certainly shaping up to be an exciting one I hope with the success of last season's cup competition win, hopefully we can go further and we can um, hopefully retain that title and do well in both the Europa League and the Bundesliga. If we can get Euro uh, European Champions League qualification, I'll be happy. But I really, really do think we can challenge potentially for the title. Whether we win it or not, we'll have to wait and see. But that's for another day. So... Yeah, thanks for joining me. If you're enjoying the series so far, please subscribe to the channel. It, it helps you get uh, up to date with all the videos that are released. If you enjoyed this catch-up episode and this look forward to season episode, um, 7 episode, then why not click a, a like on the video? That helps me get seen by other people, which is really important for my channel. But until next time, if you're playing Football Manager yourself, let me know how you're, you're getting on in the comments below. I'm always interested to hear about your saves. Um, but yeah, take care of yourselves. I will see you soon and bye for now. Thanks very much for watching this episode of the United City Randomizer Save. If you enjoyed the video, then why not click on the like button as that would really help me. If you think you know anyone who would really enjoy my Football Manager content, then feel free to share this with them. But most importantly, if you would like to join my United City here on YouTube, then hit that subscribe button to stay up to date with my video releases. If you have anything you want to say about the United City Save or the channel itself, then feel free to leave a comment below, but please try and be nice with each other. That'll do for today, so until next time, stay happy and healthy, and I will see you soon.